95% of our lives are run and created by our subconscious mind programming. Imagine if your subconscious mind is running many negative, disempowering, and self-sabotaging programs. How will that 95% of your life turn out to be? Would you like help to change your subconscious programming into something that works for you and set it to attract and create everything you desire? Join Tamara Oviat in her show Metaprogramming and the Human Biocomputer here on Ohm Times, where she will connect to the source energy and change your subconscious programming by deleting your negative belief systems. Tamara is the founder of Sacred Activations, a subconscious metaprogramming modality that rewires your brain and shifts hundreds of your belief systems so you can break away from lack, pain, and suffering and take control of what you want to create in your life. Tamara has helped hundreds of thousands of people worldwide, and she is here to help you too. It's not about fighting what you don't want. It's about creating what you do want. And the only way to do that is to change and upgrade your subconscious programming. Let Tamara help you create magic in your world. Tune in every week at Metaprogramming and the Human Biocomputer. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. I'm so excited about my guest this week is Gary Sharp. I've known Gary Sharp. I met him in Glastonbury, which is where I'm at, Glastonbury, England. And I met him, I think it was 2014. And we've become friends. And every time I would come to England, we would connect and talk. And we just had these really deep, cool, fun experiences um, he's absolutely amazing. He He's a friend of mine, and I'm so thankful to call him friend. As a matter of fact, if you guys work with us at all, you know Debs, my assistant. This is where I got Debs, was from Gary. He introduced us. So welcome to the show, Gary. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. So really, I'm going to let Gary just go for it, because he has so much he wants to cover today. I'm hoping we can get it done in an hour. If not, I'll have to have you back, Okay. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about today, Gary? So I am going to have to stop myself going, right, blah, 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 blah. I've got so much to tell you guys. Um, so <laughs> let's start it off from the beginning. I was on the side of the tour, um, and that's where I met Tamara. Um, and I was learning about sacred geometry, uh, the, the educational systems, the in and out um, it was so much, it just kind of, I only could have little bits at the time to properly understand the math of it. And there was Tamara going, wow, I'm a, I've had something really profound happen to me. And she basically said that she was walking, which was really amazing because she was saying about the geometry and downloads she was getting. So I was talking about my math and showing her pictures of geometry and she was going, yep i see that one yep oh that's what that one is so what i'm saying about walkies is throughout the 10 plus years i've known tamra i've seen her physically change um at, on many and um, mentally change on all the different levels out there and i've seen i've come in contact with walkings before and it's it's a massive responsibility to deal with it I, I've met this uh, a, a young lady, and she was convinced that she was Jesus Christ. I know in Glastonbury they that they call that the um, the whatever it's called. Um, so she had a hard time, and it was like her souls were fighting for possession. Whereas Tamra was like, "Okay, I'm understanding this process. This is this is the stuff I've got to go through. This is the stuff that." I am seeing in the future. And Gary, you're going to go on the radio show. And I'm going, whoa, okay. <laughs> and here he is. <laughs> and it's just beautiful to say, to see Tara, you know, on the many days that I've seen her, I was going, I had this download. I've squashed all these timelines and I've done this and I've done that. And, and for the next few days, I have to integrate that. And whoa, what a trip, what a ride. <laughs> Yeah, you just go, wow, that's that's just a phenomenon and mad and crazy, and I totally believe you. And it just didn't stop like that. It's going, do you know what I've done this week? Blah, 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 blah. So that was my first kind of interactions with Tamara. <laughs> and, yeah. You didn't think I was crazy and run away? <laughs> no, because I've seen 
the crazy walk-ins, bless their <laughs> souls, because it's not a very nice, comfortable ride. No. Um, and and people's souls will walk out. You know, it's very serious. Um, and, I've, and I've seen lots of people go, oh, by the way, my name's not Brian anymore. I'm called John. There you go. Job done. I accept it. But what Tamara's done is she's done it for herself. And now she's doing it for humanity and, and connecting those threads and the hearts and bring us, us all together and all those fractal pieces back. So, yeah, if you guys don't know, I'm a walk in. Hi. <laughs> and it's amazing because I've seen her embrace it, um, understand it and transform. It's just amazing. So how many years ago? Let's not do the years, but I, Tamara invited me to Stonehenge. Uh, she had an American friend four years ago. And we all got asked to go in the canteen because there was 80 mile an hour winds. All right, they were like, sorry, it's too windy. Our security officer and our rat catcher, I didn't know they had a rat catcher at Stonehenge, but they are both falling over in the center of the, the, the stone circle, which is a portal, obviously. Um, so Tamara's like, oh, okay, never mind. Let's go. Let's, I, I knew the byway down to it. So I, I still, we were still going to go, hi, Stonehenge, we can see you. By the time we got there, we chatted to the security people and, you know, we're going, oh, we're, you know, I'm a bit disappointed, my first time to go, and the wind stopped us. And he goes, well, the wind is now 30 miles an hour. You've got 20 minutes if you'd like to go in. We're like, yes, please. So my first experience at Stonehenge with Tamara was free. I and mean, it was just amazing. Um, it was very quick and overwhelming because it's just like, I want to go there. I want to do this. I want to go there. I want to feel that. Oh, that's, you know. And so second time, managed to go there, and I had the four uh 45 minutes there wait a minute wait a minute you can't skip over the first time what about the intermittent the the, the toad right talk about the toad well that was the second time because <laughs> that was the second time the first was 20 minutes. oh okay oh and then yeah. we went back because they gave us the entrance again a couple days later exactly okay 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 yeah. never mind <laughs> so yeah brilliant yeah, I remember this, doing all the, oh yeah, look at the stones, look at the difference, and just walking around and go, mm, I can feel the hot spots, cold spots, mm, imagination, imagination. And I was like, all of a sudden, I was going, I'm getting a bit bored, which is really strange. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> there's this uh, stone called the hill stone, because it looks like uh, the hill with a giant's foot. Um, though, I just, it was asking me to come to it, so I, I went there, and it it wasn't. As soon as I was getting close to, to it, I could see a multi-dimensional toad being. And it was just lovely and it just wanted to chat and talk to me. And he was saying, I grant wishes and blah, 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 blah. And I was just going, whoa, okay, right? And then it was telling me how to send energy from the toadstone to the center of the stone circle to one of the tallest pillars, which is also known as a Chiluic current. It's a, a big chimney. Um, here is a, a picture of a Chiluric current. So um, yeah, that center is like the beam me up, Scotty, from the, uh, the, the tallest stone there. Um, this is the grid system of the earth. All right, flower so of life. It, yeah, it's the flower of life, but um, what starts as the flower of life is the male and the female or polarity. So you've got the two star tetrahedrons. So you've got the male and the female interlocking. So the beautiful about this um, is that when you unfold it, you've got that picture of the primordial grid system. So that is unfolded geometry. Um, and it's very interesting to know that if you go into a church and you you muscle test a vicar or, or a nun and you tell them to focus on the cross they will test weak now if you tell them that the cross is an unfolded cube or a box they now have a mathematical equation to something that at first was to do with suffering and now they've got an idea of what it is mathematically now, if you muscle test them their strength again, that's affected their, their education. And now they're strong because they've took that away from suffering. 
right, where am I getting with this? <laughs> right, so back to Stonehenge. So get invited again back to Stonehenge uh, a few weeks ago. Four and, years later. And uh, I'm going, oh, yeah, I remember. So what I... um. I remotely communicate with different beings, um, energy lines, I'm a dowser. Um, so I'm just going, yeah, okay, let's just kind of um, just tune in. So automatically, Toe's going, yeah, can't wait to see you. I'm going to grant your wishes. And I'm going, whoa, this is going to be great. So then all of a sudden, um, I'm also a energy tool maker. Um, so one of the problems I've got is to try to explain what simple technology does in a high-tech world. Um, so I'm just trying to find the, uh, and it's really hard. So I'm trying to find, um, so here's one, one I've made. It's a tensor ring. And what it is, is I put a, a bit of metal, like a U, and then I spin it. So I spin it a bit like that. Um, and you can make bangles. The Celts have done it for eons. The Africans have done it for eons. So it's this, this technology is not new. The interesting thing about this is when you don't have a loop on the end, you have polarity yet again. I've twisted this clockwise, so that's positive. So when I connect the ends, there is a positive positive. Right. Though, if I douse the end that's both um, open, all right, so what this is doing, that dowsing rod is pointing of the highest vibration. So I know that that end is ultraviolet. This end is infrared. So in nature, um, plants emit infrared and the bees that pollinate them, they are all seeing beings. They see on every single level out. So they see these infrared go, that looks nice. That smells nice as well. They go into it, pollinate it. So then that infrared turns to ultraviolet. And that lets other bees know that that's been pollinated. Um, so I'm going back to the uh, tensor wings I make so, and the stone hedge. So I'm, I'm thinking, right. Da -da -da. And this is then taking me to the um, structure of the atom. I... I it's been quite a few years since I've been at school, so I need to re research what the structure of the atom is again. So I'm drawn it out and I'm thinking, wait on, the toadstone looks like an electron. So that ball there is the electron. So nothing static, everything is rotating and spinning. The interesting thing that I found out going to Stonehenge this time is there's 79 lichen or moss on the stone. Now, if you've got 79 of those balls that kind of rotate a bit like that, you have the um, atomic structure of platinum, which is a high vibration metal. You take one of those little balls off, you've got gold. If you only have 29 of those balls, you have copper. And obviously, you know, there's it's the periodic table. So I'm drawing this this um so i'm going hey that looks like that so 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 basically what i've done is i had the configuration of stonehenge where the hillstone or the toadstone was and i basically decompartmentalized what it was and i found out that stonehenge is basically a, a 590 printer and it it just says it all there it's, it's got all the what does a 590 printer mean a 5D or a 9D printer, which means the altar stone is usually where you have a blind spring or a, a dome, a water dome. So it's water that, that's, that, that can't get up, but that's really useful for energy. Um, so on the altar stone, that's where you would bring the periodic tables. So there's about 121 elements and probably there's more out there. And what you do is you play around with the electrons. And obviously you've got uh, to talk about the, so, uh, the toad stone because he needs to know and he's a grantor of wishes. So when we were there, I was talking to him and uh, he was going, yeah, but you grant, you, you, for me to grant your wishes, they cannot be selfish. 
So um, me and the rest of my beautiful group there, we all have roles and we're all marking the all the bits of the atom. And it's just beautiful. And me and my wife, she was in the center. The toadstone is um, a male stone. And I had another, uh, a lovely brother with me because where the ditch is around Stonehenge, that's where the plasma lies. And it's very difficult to get energy or your wish shooting through that corridor to send up to the portal and get it granted basically. Um, so he helped me just do the alchemy basically with the rest of uh, the group. Um, so then we congregated in the, and it's for protection and uh, clearing of the space and just, they're trying to, they've been trying to build a tunnel into Stonehenge, under Stonehenge for years. So we went with a heart intent that is protected, is cleared, and it knows it's loved. Um, before I've done all this as well, I communicated to the uh, the spirit of the land and the guardians around there. Um, I, I'm a gardener. Um, and I've been working on the Dodd Line. The Dodd Line starts at St. Benedict Street in Glastonbury, roads up, goes through the Abbey House, past the store, uh, the uh, Glastonbury Tour, and goes on to Stonehenge in London. So uh, And goes through my house where I'm staying here. <laughs> One of the and, other... And to me, the dog line, what does that mean? Yeah, that, that's that's really good. What does it mean for you? So. Or, to me, the ley lines mean they're like the arteries of the world, mm -hmm. and they're they've got that energy flowing through them really strong. So to me, that's what ley lines of are of the planet, and it really brings that energy through. Yeah, wraps it wraps it around and makes it really yeah. coherent. Um, the way I see it though is we had a, a comedian. I mean, he's called um uh, the Dodd. It's a guy with a tickle stick. Oh, tickle, tickle. So, you know, he's really, the kids love him. So I see that as a fey line as well. So all the fairies. But um, I've had to work on a couple of places on the Dud line before we went here. Um, so I've done that. And I was tuning in for the healing. I also make um, good bacteria or lactobacillus. And what this does is make the earth sing. It just eats all the bad um bacteria and transmute it to good so this is on a microscopic level right and as i said it makes the earth sing so stonehenge basically can be anywhere if you've got a garden um yeah you can make a standing stone and bring yeah stonehenge or any beautiful portal with love into your living space how do they do that um so there's a thing called paramagnetism um paramagnetism basically is earth's force earth's nature on how it just grows and just these tools are measured measured in paramagnetism um though because it's copper it can it vibrates to 1800 cgs it's about it's it's not like a ferrous iron magnet it's a different magnet magnetism um but stones like basalt right this is a small version Right. So this has a high quality of um, quartz in it. Um, I've doused this, and it's so important to know your yeses and nos for everything. Shall I eat this pasty? Shall I um, shall I say yes to that decision? And there's different ways of say, you'd find an out there. Um, so here's a different stone. It has like 30% less quartz in it. So the I've, I've measured this. So the paramagnetism on that is the same as the, the copper ring. Because the so that's the difference. So you get some high quality quartz, basalt, and uh, these are called cosmic pipes. Um, so in Ireland, they have round towers, and that's why their butter tastes so nice. It's because they've got these towers and they're channeling the cosmic force down to the towers and out to the land as a way of broadcasting a frequency. We're in the age where everybody's broadcasting loads of different frequencies. And personally, I feel like instead of listening to a binaural point, uh, beat, go and sit next to the sea or a stream. We need to do it more naturally rather than technology. Um, I just want to go back into the twisting of the wire. As you can see, it looks like a keyless key. 
So I showed you the one without the circle, and that had a directional of energy. Well, this doesn't. This has a, I've created an energy field there. So there's, it's just emitting ultraviolet. So that's that. So the makeup of you the- You see all the stuff he has here, you guys. <laughs> so this is a really simple cube octahedron or um, how this um, guy has said it. there's lots of different um, people that have come up with it. So it symbolizes universal, unconditional love and opening the heart. Uh, Buck, Miss, Buckminster Fuller named it the Vector Equilibrium. So you've got loads Here's of- on the picture. So this is the 2D version, you know? So it's, it's amazing how to get a 3D picture from a 2D is actually quite difficult. So if we stellate that, or if you add points to it, you've got a stellated heart star. And you know, that's really beautiful. That's really healing trauma um, and everything. So then if you put lots of them together, you've got the 64 cell. This is the flower of life, but in straight lines. He makes these things. So I've, as you know, I'm a guy. Really <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I really want to explain about the, so with stone, standing stones, they have bands, just like trees. Trees have bands. They have heart chakras and you can measure them. So they're about 12 to 18 inches in increments. Um, and this is the structure um, of a plant. Right. So the, we're going into platonic solids. So let's say, let's just focus on the green. That is the pyramid, the Giza pyramid, right? But obviously there's a pyramid under it because it's the, the mirror reflection. So that's called an octahedron. It represents air. Um, the smaller triangles, uh, which is a, a tetrahedron, uh, represents water. All right. But the core thing about this is you've got the vesica of policies. You know, this is cell division we're talking about. So this is how a, a, a tree, well, it's, it's quite interesting because you can put this tree upside down. So that's the tree. He's got his green leaves on. He's got his roots. And you can turn it upside down. That's the lawn. And it's in winter time, So it has no leaves. And that's the, the special bit in between. So a fractal is a way of seeing into infinity. And you've got all these different points that you can relate to and connect to the whole planet, the trees, the plants, and the earth. So the DNA is a, it's like a ladder, it's got steps in. So a plant has two of them. So there's four rotational forces. And that, which is, I've made this big model and you can't really see because it's copper. And I'll put another one up there. And all of a sudden you can see it's, it's a spiraling, it's a spiraling force, which is, uh, it's great to just know the one fractal. And as soon as you start building on it, all of a sudden you're going, aha, yes, it's, it's, it's unfolding. So when I first started making geometry, I was trying to do it my right. Oh yeah, yeah, that's how it goes. This is how it goes and I would mess up. So I had to go, right, I kind of understand that's squares and that's triangles. So I'm just kind of gonna go flow, not think about it. And voila, it usually happens. When you think about it, you mess up. It's that simple. Okay, take a nice big deep breath. <laughs> you guys, we have to go to break. So we'll be right back. Stay with us. We got a lot more. Oh, lots more. <laughs> Home Times TV. Do you want to go deeper into sacred activations, which is a subconscious metaprogramming process? Tamara Oviat is inviting you to visit her website at tamaraoviat.com to sign up and get lifetime access to three free activations that you can listen to anytime you want or as often as you need. If you like what Tamara does and like to incorporate sacred activations into your life, 
She also offers live webinars, master classes, and practitioner's training to further support your healing, manifestations, and expansion. There are hundreds of activations on her website that address different aspects of your life, money, health, relationships, intuitive abilities, and more. Head over to her website at tamraoviat.com and experience the magic of sacred activations. Thank you for listening. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Own Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds Walk a mile in my shoes Walk, Walk a, a mile, mile in my, in my shoes. shoes Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, I'm going to let Gary keep going. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying him. He's absolutely amazing. He just got married. He's got an absolutely beautiful wife. I call her, call her that she's a she's a heart of gold. I mean, she's really amazing. She's a really beautiful person. And she supports him in his craziness. So go ahead, Gary. <laughs> right, let's show you this picture, the 2D cube octahedron again. And there are, it's, it's like a clock with all the access that goes in the middle, everything's equal. So it's like a clock, there's 12 points. So if you put 12 cube octahedrons together, check this out, it kind of looks like that. And this is to do with manifestation. And the thing is, is- I want this one. So this is hypergeometry. <laughs> when, you, when you put lots of, so geometry also is the one that leads on to the many. So there's 12 key the energy. Can yeah. I hold this? Of course you can. Thank you. Okay, you keep talking. The, I'll hold this. The special thing that this does is it brings in other geometry. Um, so you've got the five platonic solids and you've got the 13 archimedial solids. So the platonic solids are male, archimedians are female. So you, it, this is nested in this structure here, which is really... Did you make that also? Uh, that's a, a, a science tool. So okay. Um, so with the platonic solids, you cut the ends off and they become female and they have loads of long names. Um, so I just want to go back. So this, is, there's a thing called the banker grid. So it's all in cubes and it goes up like a skyscraper. And it just, it's, we've got so many different interactions of this, this matrix of matrix and we can influence it with our heart. Um, so I just want to go in and to show you this, this cool thing, which is, um, it's a hypercube or a tesseract. Um, one of the really interesting things about this is this is found 2, 2D, so um, in churches and cathedrals and in tiles. So this is a portal. Um, so it's numbers of four and eight. So if you put this at an angle, and it's really hard to kind of see on this computer, is, oh yes you can, you can make out a pentagram. So the pentagram is basically the sun. It's that simple. And basically there's only geometry. So 
a 2D picture doesn't really exist. It's just an explanation. So an inverted pentagram means absolutely nothing because it's one aspect of a 12-sided sphere that contracts, pulses, and fluctuates and can stellate. So it's just like a line does not really exist because on the anatomical levels, it's full of molecules. So deep down, it doesn't exist. Anyway, let's go and have a look at this primordial grid of the Earth again. Um, so this is also called a UFO. Uh, you can you can manifest, um, you can use it like a steering wheel. Yet again, with dowsing, there's a proper way to hold it. And it's that, um, so sometimes I, I click my fingers. Is my name Gary? I can't click my finger. Is my name Susan? Uh, my body, your body doesn't lie. It's, I'm weak. So I know that my name isn't He's Susan. not Susan. <laughs> I'm not Susan, everyone. <laughs> So what happens is, oh, yeah, it's beautiful. This visit that Tamara done is she come, she landed on the new moon. So what a new moon does is it depresses your aura. It really puts a, and Tamara's got this beautiful picture. And it looks like she has got, it looks like she's got that on her head. You know, it's, her phone is showing that for jet lag, jet lag, the special place that she's on and the phone it just links up and goes, you yeah, know, that's what's happening to your, um, your energetics at the moment. Um, so when we were in Stonehenge, that was on a full moon. So she had another photo. And this is the amazing thing, because I had an experience with um, a function I had to go to. Some people are worried about this person might be a bit sabotageal um, and ruin the thing. So I'm tuning in and I can see her aura. But I don't just see Aurora, I see her double aura. So instantly I know she is walking. And she's one of these people that... Um, it's not talking about me now, it's no, under someone else. It's completely somebody else. And it's 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 the difficulty. I, I can't express enough how awkward it makes people feel to know that their soul has a contract and um, it's time to upgrade and get on with it. Um, so... She has the picture of a double aura, and that is a that is her energy of her walking on a photo, and also describes what a full moon does, which is a wiser. It makes your your aura big, and you know it, it plays around with the sea. I used to work in um, uh, a mental hospital, and I didn't need to know the phases of the moon, full or new is because three days before, you would see certain people, behavioural changes, bipolar, all that thing. All of a sudden, you're going, oh, they're acting strange again. Wait on. Oh, that's, yeah, full moon in three days. The other interesting thing about the moon is there's certain flow energies of the Earth that is not available to us, which is a bit awkward because there's some really positive stuff that we can feed on, like breathitarians, that if we know where they are and how to tune and find them, that during that six days, seven days of that full moon phase, they are not available to us. So we've got to find other ways of trying to not go a bit kind of lunar, loopy or, you know, so that just seeing those photos is lovely to go, ha, that's what I'm on about. Brilliant proof. What photo of me and Stonehenge are you referring to? It was the last photo. And there's a double double picture. It's on Wes's phone. He, he just showed oh. me, and I'm like, "Whoa, that's the!" Uh, and it's just amazing. So going back to Stonehenge and moon phases and the a planetary grid planet. So you've got this UFO that comes down like that, all right. But the way it flows off is what it does. It rotates on one of those lines and then just shoots off because it's using the magnetic field. Okay, wait a minute. Slow Earth. down here. <laughs> Which bit did you get? Slow down. Here, set this down. <laughs> I love this thing, the energy. I just want to stick my head on it and just sit there. It's gorgeous. Oh, it's amazing. Okay. So I know he's all over the place. That's Gary. But he's ta now talking about UFOs and how they use the ley lines and the structures. So let's talk about that. So they, you never see a chemtrail or an exhaust from 
a UFO. It's because they don't need it because they are tapping in to the electromagnetic force of the Earth. At certain times in the month, they're the ley lines can expand and contract and like that. So they know where to go, where to shoot off, and the portals that they can use. Certain long barrows and stone circles have three different types of rock. And whoever put them there has done this really cleverly to open these gateways and um, bring things in and manifest things in. What do you mean by that? So are you saying like Stonehenge and um, Giza pyramids and um, those are portals? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so portals for what? For for other dimensions to come in? What do you mean by that? So there's lots to say in that people say Glastonbury is the heart chakra of the earth. And they say, oh, no, it in, there's another place, the volcano. That's a, so... But if you look at uh, an octopus, an octopus has three hearts. So why can't Mother Earth have three hearts or many hearts? So that's what I'm talking about is the balance and stability of all these special places. So when I was at Stonehenge this time, I linked up to the Easter Islands. Um, so there's and also I got to, to do other things on the land because now I've got to do something with the planetary system. And that's like, oh, great. OK, um, the, th the thing about having all this knowledge and trying to explain things is it's the unknown. Um, once I went to see a friend and we had an embrace, see you later. And before I said, see you later, I could see this lightning strike of brother energies. And I'm like, oh, what, what does that mean? Two hours later, my friend phones me up and go, you know that, um, that thing we've seen above our aura, you've seen above our auras? Well, there was an electrical fault in the... Um, the place that she's living is four stories and everybody had to be um, evacuated because there was an electrical fault that could start a fire. So sometimes when I see energy, the universe at large will go, oh, but Gary, guess what? This is what that means. So there's this intelligence. If you're patient and you wait for it, it will tell you what's what and how things um, happen. Um, I keep looking at this thing on the keyboard. Uh, yeah, I wanted to I, bring that up. I've, so the this first, is so funny, you guys. So I'm telling these guys about the toadstone. And um, <clears throat> so the first thing I say to the layman about sacred ge geometry is, <clears throat> if you see a smile, if someone smiles at you, you will smile back. It, it's that simple. Yeah, you'll feel good. Now, if you see a sad face, angry face, you're not going to be feel, feeling too special. You're going to be in sympathy because all our hearts are connected. Doesn't matter how much armor you put there, and you're going to your energy levels are going to plummet. So, I'm talking about do this ceremony, tell them about the toadstone. So we're walking to the uh, gift shop, right? We've probably walked two two steps into the gift shop, right? And we've got this. 1812 um, wood print block picture. They call it a Japanese block print of a, they call it a frog, but it's clearly a toad. But as you know, toads have a, they have a sad face. So I'm going, I've just brought this. I'm going to put it on my fridge because it was a great time to remember, but I, I can't look at a sad face because, you know, so I thought, right, I'm going to have to kind of um, rechange it. So I gave him a smile. All right. And it looks like he's eaten Stonehenge, but also it represents that Stonehenge is that portal. OK, wait a minute here, <laughs> Gary. So you guys, he's talking about the stone. He does his whole ceremony. Right. His wife has to stand by Debs and I and his sister, my, our, my friend Wesley or our friend Wesley had to stand in between him and the toadstone. And he reads off this whole prayer. His wife is repeating it with us. He's talking about the toadstone, going on and on about the toadstone. We walk into the gift shop, and this is the first thing we see. I have been to Stonehenge many, many times. I have never seen this in the shop. So here the toad shows up. And two days before we go, he's out gardening and is talking to a toad. 
And then the day after we went, Deb sees a toad in her yard. Remember that? I mean, it's like, you guys, this was crazy. And I hadn't read the back of this yet. And I was doing a class with in Japan. And I was telling them about what happened in Stonehenge with this toad in the gift shop. And then I flipped this over. And while I'm talking to my Japanese class, I look at this and it's Japanese woodblock print from 1814. And it's like, what the heck? <laughs> so it was so weird how all of this came together and how the toad was confirming for us that this was real. I, I was like, what? That, but yeah, and everyone's going, that's what you're on about. And then Tamara's like, I can confirm this wasn't here. This never, here. <laughs> never seen that before. Brand new. Right when we walked in, you couldn't miss it. So um, I, I just want to share that. Um, so I, I was the actor for the Electron. Um, I think... Uh, my wife was the proton, which is in the center. So I was there. Uh, Wes, he was the time crystal holder. You got to hold that up, Mark. He was the time crystal holder. So that is that bit there. Debs was the nucleus. Um, Tamara was the, the neuron. Um, so, yeah, we all had our roles in the anatomical structure. So we weren't just huddled together. We were playing out certain roles of how I saw things. And it was just so beautiful. And then we all come together in the center and uh, Tamara just done this, this lovely prayer for world peace. And it was just, yeah, it was just really, really, really special. Really special. Um, <laughs> where are we going now? <laughs> I don't know. Where are we going now, Gary? <laughs> so look, Gary makes these things and he also sells them. So he's starting to sell them. I have some at my house. I have what's called the cloud buster on my rooftop. I don't have that. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, show it. You have that one. So this is... Is uh, this what I... I don't have this. You have a bigger version of that. So. Okay. Oh, this is what's on my roof. Yes. It's, uh, it's a harmonizer or a toroidal uh, transducer, which basically means... There's a continual upsurge, gentle upsurge of energy. Um, and you can um, increase the field. So this has about a 20 foot field with no frequency put in, in it. Um, and then you can put certain frequencies in it. The other day, this cat was purring into it. And that's beautiful because going back to the toad and finding the real toad, he was talking to me about the toadstone. And I've had this before when I'm re remotely reviewing. Somebody asked me about their cat um, and it was 20 years old. Um, it's basically, they just wanted it to live forever. Um, so they just asked me, would I talk to it and make it better? I knew I couldn't make it better, but uh, just out of pure love, I just linked to it and I gave it just compassion, softness and just ease of um, being in no discomfort and to do what, you know, it, it, it just just to nullify, just to bring it at peace. So, obviously, the cat passed over. Hopefully, because well, how it, how much longer? When did he pass over from your conversation? How long in between? Not even a day. Not oh. even a day. So it was that you, I, I give you permission to release, and you have done your your incarnation here. So on my um, honeymoon, on our honeymoon. I we seen this um, ocelot, which are a big cats, and he was just gorgeous. And uh, he was on a lead, and he come up to me, and he could see in my energy field the conversation I had with the deceased cats. It was still in my energy, and it just read my energy. So when you go to a place and you do whatever. Just remember to bless it and bring all your energy back with you. Because when you're going, oh, yeah, today at work, that happened, that happened. Oh, today, da, 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 you've left some of your energy there. And, the, you know, so it's just it's just amazing that I've had the cat experience 
and then I had the toad spirit. So two live beings, non live being, and uh, yeah. So it's just that's just multi dimension. Yeah, we can talk to anything. <laughs> you can, and it's <clears throat> it's just being heartfelt, and it's just as soon as you're heartfelt and in the heart, you know, and respectful. It's just okay. So you sell this? I do. Yes. What do you sell it for? It's to do with, um, so I'm also into electrical. It's heavy, by the way. It's heavy. Um, it's basically, if you think of a boom box or a speaker, what this is doing is it's harmonizing it. It's, it's turning the soil over, but also upwards. So it's cleaning the area with, um, I have this recording, and it sounds mad, of a pure molecule of a rain cloud. It doesn't sound too pretty. But what it does, it expands the energy field to about 40 miles. So, and it's just, yeah, everybody's getting a a, a big splash of ultraviolet light, basically. Hey, look, Gary doesn't have a website at this yet. point. Yet. Yet. <laughs> he doesn't sell this online. So this is really special to connect with him. So what's your email address, Gary? Um, so... 2005, the birth, the birth of YouTube, and everybody was going, email, email. There's me going, I want to be an anarchist, and I don't want an email. And then I realized that I need an email. So my email, <laughs> Gaza, G-A-Z-Z-A, shark, S-H-A-R-K, at gmail.com. So Gaza, shark, one word, at gmail.com. So. Good. And you'll find them on my friend's list on facebook if you want to connect with them through facebook gary sharp yeah what the so, heck is so this that? this is organized so this helps with 5g it's also um it's these copper pipes so there's 50 percent resin 50 percent metal and what that does is creates another energy field but william um reich he was doing loads of experiments with cloud busting um even Kate Bush, the singer, she has a song about cloud busting. So yeah, you see this amazing machine on YouTube. If you, so these are really great to neutralize 5G. So 5G actually interacts and gets neutralized by this. Um, it's, these are reflectors. So what this does is there's quartz in there as well. And the resin, when it sets off, puts pressure on the quartz and gives it a piezoelectricity charge. So depending if you have a drought, depending if you have uh, floods, there's different ways that you can interact with these devices and certain frequencies just to kind of soothe the weather. There's this um, lovely story of a, um, a trainee shaman and his his um task is to eat a tornado so that's what his master's told him to do and he's got to go out and eat this tornado so he's got to think how the hell am i going to die how am i going to eat the tornado well the tornado was actually in his heart so what he had to do is connect with his heart and connect with that water and wind and just calm it down with just pure prayer pure love and intention because intention is everything intention is everything it's massive it's massive yeah yeah because whatever you're thinking or whatever you're feeling you're feeding it to the collective consciousness so wherever your mind is you are supporting the world in that where your mind is your energy is yeah you know my first visit to stonehenge you know I, yes i was a bit peeved but it's like well, that doesn't matter let's still go around i'm still going to get close to it and with that well, Lots of people just left, got in their car, and went down the motorway. We were like, we're still going to have some yeah, fun. Yeah, what was there, like four of us in there? How many? Four. There yeah. was four of us. Just You guys, the energy in Stonehenge, when you're inside Stonehenge versus outside Stonehenge is completely different. It's absolutely completely different. So we had, there was four of us in that day. We had 20 minutes. And then we came back, what was it, two days later, they gave us tickets again. That's right, yeah. They gave yeah. us free tickets, so we got to go back and do it again. And that's when he talked to the Toadstone. And then as a wedding gift, um, 
Oh, you guys, I'm coming to Glastonbury, right? It's last minute. Like me, last minute, what? <laughs> so I'm talking to my friend Wes and Stonehenge is sold out, right? It's sold out. And then um, like, I think it was like two weeks before I come over, he goes on the site again and there's openings. So we bought six openings. We bought six tickets because there's, I think there's 24 allowed in at a time in the center. And this is before the park opens. So we have to be there at like 6.30 in the morning. And that was like a miracle on its own, you know? So there was, there was um, one day opened up and then um, I had Carolina coming too, but then she couldn't come because her family got sick. So Gary ended up coming with his sister and his wife and it was, really beautiful how it how it all worked out you know I'm really sorry Carolina wasn't able to be there but there was six of us that got to go inside Stonehenge again and it was really amazing um we'll be doing that again next year I'm coming back here in June next year I'm gonna be doing practitioners and master practitioners training so if you guys want to do those in person that will be um oh no wait a minute I'm doing medical intuitive here I'm doing masters in Cancun before that, uh, medical intuitive and, and practitioner, where you've got the Abbey House booked, you have no idea how cool that is. And we'll have access to the Abbey um, Browns, which is, it's on the Michael and Mary Ley lines. Um, I guess in the dog lines too, go through there, right? Yep. yep. Wow. Yeah, and I'm living, I'm on the dog line. I live here in two days, but the dreams and everything that has been happening <clears> since <throat> I've been here has just been absolutely wild i've had some wild dreams here so the garden i've been doing on the garden uh the garden and i've been doing on the dodd line um there's been a, a few energetic disturbances so i kind of do my silent little thing and uh this one particular person's like right i've been told by another psychic friend i've got to put a buddha here and i've looked at the line and then crossed the ashram bit there's another buddha so two buddhas looking at each other and i'm going um, right instantly buddha does not test strong because buddha belly he doesn't transmute energy and yet again always test don't believe what i say test it yes and no bells and rods click your fingers what have you i use my body i stand up and move back and forth that's it yeah so is, is my name gary i will want to walk forward right if, is my name susan i will fall back so it's, it's just so important to keep checking in and I've lost the thread once. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We're about done. But ah, Quan Yin. So Quan Yin. I don't work with archetypes. I believe that we are we are your guides. We are God. We, we are all gods. So I don't yeah. I don't need to work with archetypes. Names are just names. And I get Quan Yin walking right. And you just test Quan Yin. She's a beautiful Mother Earth. She just she's the nurturer. And I you know I just heard yeah I'm gonna be with you all, all your way. And it's just like, it's just, it's just so lovely to feel an archetype when I don't work with archetypes. Yeah. Kuan Yin came to me and gave me an activation. Whoa. Yeah. It Ooh. clears sorrow and sadness out of your lungs. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. She's beautiful. Yeah. I, Buddha came to me too. Yeah. And I got the compassion activation from him. Mm. And I remember I was drawing him. I was in Glastonbury, of course. And I was sitting there drawing him one night and I had tears dripping out of my eyes. He was talking to me and just said, just do what you're doing. We got you. Don't worry about it. We're here for you. I got goosebumps mm -hmm. from head to toe right now. So um, I just feel that you obviously talk and it's just great to have that. But people use them as a dumpster. You know, you don't do that. You know, you just yeah. and unfortunately, that's what people do. You know? So how do they get this stuff from you? Just send you an email? Yeah. And you'll tell them what you have available? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is copper. I have three pieces at my house. Um, I have the one with the heart in the center and the and the crystal in my office on the wall. Beautiful. I have Kelsey one heart. in my bedroom. I think it's under the bed or it's on my husband's nightstand. And then I have this one. We have this like bell tower area on top of our house um and it's up there 
So Tamara's sent me the picture and <laughs> Tamara to be in Tamara, she ain't going to do anything small. She's, it's just like, it's like a bell up on top of a house. And you just go, my oh, geez. But the beauty is with electroculture. So electroculture is um, with 5G and all the smog in our atmosphere, we're finding a um, problem of transmitting ether down into the soil. So people are sticking copper in, electrifying the land to get bigger vegetables, basically. Um, so what Tamara's doing is just sending this ball of light in the atmosphere of Mexico, which is totally beautiful and just outrageously amazing. <laughs> I love Mexico. And it, yet again, it's the Chiluric current. So every time Tamara's doing her activation and talking love, it's boom, boom. And you see it on different plants. So certain plants have sp spheres or spheroids. Some are... Um, satellites um and some are like plasma stations it's just nature if you tune in and slow down and look at it there's it just didn't chance happen there's a reason why they do that all right you guys we're done for the day thank you gary i really appreciate you being here thank you. you're so amazing here give me a hug <laughs> Yeah. I'm really glad we got to do this in person. Um, I'm actually recording Tariff tomorrow. Um, so we'll be playing it for you on a replay because um, I'm excited to have him in person. Gary, you got to connect with him. Um, he's he's really, really, really magical. We've been friends, I think, for nine, ten years now. And um, I'm so thankful to be friends. We're like cosmic brother and sister. Same. I'm not quite old enough to be his mom. <laughs> not quite. So I, I'm the big sister here. <laughs> <Yay. laughs> Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed everything. And thank you for spending your time with us. See you later. Bye. So